another day, another box to watching episode. We are at episode number 36, if I'm right. We are back. We had 14 games. Before we jump into it, if you enjoy basketball content, basketball talk, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know your thoughts about today's games, subscribe, and let's jump right into it. First up, we had the Hornets winning at home against the Timberwolves. This game really surprised me, because, you know, it was late here in Europe, it started at 11 p.m., so I watched a bit, then I went to sleep, uh, right at, like, after a quarter and a half, the Timberwolves were in control, I felt like, yeah, they were gonna cruise to victory, since they've been playing much better, and then they blew it, they blew it, they didn't play good basketball, and <laughs> I had to watch the second half, <laughs> so, yeah, it was not, not pleasant from the Wolves, their bench didn't do anything besides Jalen Noel, and Anthony Edwards shot pretty alright, D'Angelo Russell has been good, Rudy Gobert was solid, but Carl Anthony Towns 19 points on 22 field goal attempts, it's not gonna cut it, Jaden McDaniels picked him up in fantasy, of course he had to have a bad game today, and the Hornets came storming back, they, uh, they keep fighting, even though they're facing many injuries, to their best players, now Gordon Hayward is out indefinitely, which feels almost scheduled at this point with how his luck has been, and they keep fighting, they keep, you know, doing what they can to stay in games, and their games have been competitive for most of the time, yeah, there has been occasional blowouts, but they have been in the games, and I gotta give them huge respect, they are in a perfect position, they have their pick, they can continue losing, since Lamel was not even playing, they pick up some wins here and there, the odds are not that bad, and Kelly Ubre is playing great, maybe you could get something for him at the deadline, Terry Rozier, uh, I still don't like how he's playing, because he's been shot chucking, but at the same time, who else is supposed to take these shots, PJ Washington's been solid, Kai Jones today got, you know, it feels like for the first time he got more minutes, he played some serious, you know, basketball, and he was really solid. He had 9 and 12 in 27 minutes, 3 of 5 from the field, made 3 free throws. Some good stuff for the Hornets and a good win against the T-Wolves. Next up, we have the 76ers winning against the Orlando Magic, as they keep holding on with their 3 stars. And it has been the resurgence of Shake Milton, who's now getting playing time since there's literally no one else to play really. And he had 24 points, 10 assists, 9 rebounds today. He was sensational, Montrez Harrell was really good today, he had 14 and 8. Tobias Harris continues to step up, 23 points, 10 rebounds, 5 assists. Just two turnovers, great play from him. Uh, George Sniang off the bench keeps shooting lights out, 18 points. And they've won a good game against the Magic, who got Paolo back. In his first game back, he struggled a little bit from the field, still got to the line a bunch. 19 points, 4 rebounds, 3 assists, he was solid. Ball, ball, 18 and 8, he continues to provide some entertainment for us, as he's really fun to watch. Franz Wagner continues his really good play. And when you look at how he's been playing, he might be the third, certainly in the top three best players of last year's draft as of right now. So that's really good to see. And the Magic pick up a rough loss, but at the same time, is it really bad loss, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they're still competitive. I like, li I'm liking that, you know, from the teams that are supposed to tank and that are actually tanking, uh, we, we're seeing a much more competitive spirit from, uh, it feels like all of these, maybe you could say Houston, but they won today also. It feels, it just feels, <clears throat> it just feels like that all these teams that are tanking are really competitive and are not giving any teams uh, easy time, which I'm happy to see, which is good for the league, it's entertaining, it's more fun to watch more games, and shout out to these teams, man. Next up, we have a, next up, we had an overtime thriller between the Blazers and the Knicks, as the Knicks fall at home against the Blazers. We had two sensational performances from the, on the Blazers side, as Anthony Simons and Jeremy Grant combined for 86 points on the night. Anthony Simons had 38, 4 and 5 on 13 of 25 shooting. He made 8 of 8 of his free throws, just one turnover in 47 minutes of play. Jeremy Grant had 44 points, 
and he was 10 of 20, he made 21 free throws out of 28, which is crazy, there were a lot of foul calls in this game, he was going back and forth, the Knicks got up to a quite, you know, not a big lead, but they were up 10, then the, the Red Blazers came storming back, got some foul calls, got to the free throw line, rattled the Knicks a little bit with that, and they won this game in OT without Dame, great stuff from them, uh, Yusuf Nurkic at 20 and 8 also, Josh Hart had 19 rebounds, Josh Hart, as we all know, the best rebounding guard in the league, probably, in <laughs> sensational stuff, and a good win for the Blazers as they, you know, get to continue to be really good. The Knicks, man, is it ugly to watch the Knicks. I had to make a video about them. They are the most middle of the pack team ever. They are the painfully average team of the NBA. They are now 9 and 10. I'm 100% sure they're going to win their next game and are going to be 10 and 10. Well, maybe not 100% sure because I'm not sure who they're playing, but, you know, it wouldn't be surprising. Julius Randle, I'm so disappointed with him. His attitude is bad on the court, his play is ugly, his shot, even though he's been shooting pretty all right from the three-point line, it just feels bad, it just, when you, when you see him shoot the ball, it feels like he's, he does not know if it's gonna go in or not, <laughs> so, I'm not sure, you know, if that's a good thing, <laughs> no, it's not a good thing, <laughs> yeah, RJ Barrett, 6 of 22, 19 points, he has he been underwhelming, we've also talked about that, the Knicks are just painfully average and painfully mediocre, mid, middle of the pack, however you want to call them, they're all of that. Next up we had the Celtics winning again at home as they are now 15 and 4 as they beat the red hot Sacramento Kings team. This was a really good game, <laughs> it was back and forth, the Celtics jumped out a huge lead and it felt like yeah they were gonna blow these Kings out, but the Kings fought back, rallied back, got back into the game, they were up at the half and then the Celtics absolutely obliterated them the rest of the way, as they jumped out to a lead later in the third quarter and they just didn't look back at all, blew them out the park in the second half and the Kings were on a, you know, uh, lost the game before against the Hawks, now they lose against the Celtics, some rough couple of losses, but they, they've shown some competitive spirit, uh, Harrison Barnes was solid, Keegan Marek continues to struggle really from the field and it has been a little concerning these last couple of games and overall the starting lineup was not good today. Kevin Herder was 7 points, 2 of 10, De'Aaron Fox had some moments but he was 6 of 17, Domantas Sabonis played solid offensively but still his defense was not uh, great and then he settled for too many jumpers even though they were giving it to him but they were giving it to him for a reason, right? But the bench was solid and some cool minutes but uh, they just didn't have enough for this Celtics team that is playing out of this world Jason Tatum once again proving his MVP case 38, 8 and 4, 10 of 17 Jalen Brown in just 26 minutes, he was in full, full trouble he had 25, 5 and 4 Al Horford had 13, Derek White had 16, he's been red hot Malcolm Brogdon chipped in, Sam Hauser had 3 threes this team is crazy man, they are playing incredible basketball, their bench is really good, even when they are not shooting well, their defensive scheme is pretty solid, even though the defense has not been as great as last year, but at the same time the offense is so good that it's a little inflated when you think about it, <laughs> crazy team, they are playing so well, shout out to the Celtics. Then we had my frisky Pacers, the frisky Pacers beating the Nets as they fall to 9 and 11, <laughs> uh, the Pacers are now 11 and 7 and they're heading on the road and that's gonna be interesting to see. This game was a shootout, there were many tough shots made, a lot of <laughs> three-pointers, a lot of mid-ranges, just a lot, whole lot of offense, not much defense being played and it was really fun. KD 36, 9 and 8, he tried his best in the fourth quarter, he was struggling before the fourth quarter, then in the fourth quarter he turned it up, but the Pacers were just too hot, Kyrie was okay, 20 points, 8 of 17, he was okay -ish. Uh I still really liked what I saw from Ben Simmons, as he had 20 and 6, uh, Royce O'Neal still shot pretty okay, Nick Claxton was solid, even though his plus minus doesn't affect it, but it felt like he didn't play that bad, 
the parameter defense is still a problem. Uh, Skyri is a bad defender. He's playing bad defense when you watch him. Seth Curry is a bad defender. He's not playing well. Joe Harris can't can't play 12 minutes if he's not shooting anything. If he's not making anything, just give him five minutes. If he's making something, put him up there again. He can't play 12 minutes if he's not made a three in five minutes to me. He's been so bad. And they should consider... I'm not sure if there's a market for him. If anyone would want him. Since he's been so hurt. The sh struggles have been bad. His defense is bad. I don't know. But they have to consider trading him or not playing him. And yeah, the Nets are a rough bunch. And we all know that. But let's focus on the bright side. Because the Pacers are really good. Uh, not, 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 we don't know if really good. But they're fun and they're good. They're 100% good. They have really good talent. Miles Turner might, have, might, might be the best center in the East right now. The way he's playing. As, except for Joel Embiid. But he's not played as much. You know, so you know you obviously have to count Embiid. But... With the way Miles Turner has been playing, he's up there with the best centers in the East. And he had 23 points, 8 rebounds, 3 assists. His shot has been falling. He was 9 of 11 today, 2 for 3 from the 3-point line. Buddy Hill, 26 points, 9 of 15, his best game in a while. He had 26, 3, 3, and 3 steals. He was sensational. Tyrese Halliburton, 21 points, 15 assists, 0 turnovers. His shot has been a little off. He continues to hit that step back of his. That's really ugly. But when it goes in, it's, you know, you're like, okay, okay. But it's not falling in at this time. Uh, Benedict Maturin didn't shoot as efficient, but he was persistent. He made really clutch shots in the fourth quarter. He had 20 points, four rebounds off the bench. And TJ McConnell, eight and four and five. He was solid off the bench. Also, James Johnson got fourth quarter minutes in, and, he, and he was impactful in his nine minutes. He... Also made some cool plays down the stretch. And it was just a good Pacers win. We were down a lot in the first half. It felt like they were going to get just out-talented by Brooklyn. But they didn't, you know, they don't, uh, how do you say it? They don't get too down on themselves. They keep fighting and they most of the time get back into the games. They don't win all of them, obviously. But they just give, get themselves a chance. They give themselves a chance and they took it today. Get a huge win as they now head on the road. They're playing seven straight road games, if I'm not, if I'm uh, correct. And that's going to be the real test for them, how they fare on this seven-game road trip, if they're, you know, could be a playoff team, actually. Next up, we had the Wizards playing against the Heat once again in Miami, as Miami win a close one without Jimmy Butler still. The Wizards got back Bradley Beal today. They were playing some good basketball, and I felt like they were going to just beat them and were going to be better, but the Heat got some huge resiliency. This was never, you know, that was never a really a huge lead, or it didn't feel like it. It was a back-and-forth game once again. As there has been uh, way too many, of, not, not way too many of them, because you lo love to see it, that there is back and forth games, some good defense being played also in this game. And it's just fun to see that these teams are competing. They are tight games, you got some, he, some really good clutch minutes. And the Wizards didn't have enough today. Porzingis struggled from the field. He's had a couple of rough games. Kyle Kuzma, on the other hand, has been really good. 28 and 7, they need to put together some games when they're both really good, because it feels like they, you know, didn't put together games where they've both been good. Corey Kispert had his worst game of the season, probably, since he's been really good shooting the ball, and he was just one of seven from the three-point line. Bradley Beal in his return after one game of season, had 28, 5 and 5. He had three blocks also. He was really solid. The bench was okay. Daniel Gafford, especially in his eight minutes, was really impactful. Had three huge dunks and was really good. But in the end, Miami was just better. This was not that they played that bad, but the other team was just better. And sometimes two good teams play each other. Or two good playing teams are playing each other. And the other one has to lose, right? And with that, Bam Adebayo had his best game of the season. And he's been stepping up. He has to continue playing like this, but uh, right now he's playing really well. 38, 12, and 3, 15 of 22 shooting. He also made some clutch buckets. Tyler Hero is still getting into the shape of things, playing 39 minutes, 4 of 18, 11, and 10. 
Still good for Miami that he's back. He has to get a little bit more into the groove. Made some buckets down the stretch. Did some good things down the stretch playmaking wise. Kyle Lowry, 13, 7 and 8. He's been solid. He made the clutch and one three-pointer down the stretch. Caleb Martin also was huge down the stretch. Well, all of them played huge down the stretch. And good win for Miami who are now... 9-11 also, if I'm correct, yeah, I'm right, and uh, hopefully they get Jimmy Butler back soonish, and can put together some string of games when they're healthy, and can show us what they really are, right? Next up, we have the Rockets beating the Hawks at home in another shootout, uh, this was a really rough one, <clears throat> this was a really rough one for the Hawks, who were missing Clint Capella today, due to, I'm not sure what it was, some dental emergency, I, I don't know what it actually was, uh, it had something to do with dental, but um, I don't want to be misspoken here. I don't have it pulled up right now. And it doesn't matter. He was out today. And their defense really suffered. Even though Onyeka Okongu was okay in his role, he had 4 and 11, 2 steals, 2 blocks. Uh, the presence of Clint Capella was really missing today. And the defense really was bad today from the Hawks. And John Collins continues to struggle. He's been in the trade rumors again. I'll pull up some John Collins trade that would make sense for maybe both teams. And we'll see. I have to do that video soonish. DeAndre Hunter didn't have a good game today. Then we had the monster duo game, another monster duo game. Dejante Mare and Trey Young. 44 points for Trey. 39 points for Dejante. He had eight three pointers, which is his career high. And then there were those, uh, you know, they were having a little too much fun, maybe, when they pushed the lead in the third quarter. It felt like to 20 points, but it was probably like 15. And the game felt it was going to be over in the third quarter, right there. But the uh, Hawks didn't defend anything, and the Rockets fought back. And all these points came to a waste, as, you know, the Hawks would have been, you know, 12, 12 and 7 now. Would have been a really good win against a bad team, but it's a rough loss when your two both great players had basically both 40. AJ Griffin, I love to see him, how he's playing. 23 minutes, he's getting more and more time. So that's a silver lining, I guess, for Atlanta, but a very bad loss against a bad Houston team. Kenyon Martin Jr., who is a solid player, but they made him look like an all-star. Without Clint Capella, he had 21 points, 15 rebounds, 10 of 13 from the field. He's going to be interesting to see if, you know, there will be a trade market for him. Javari Smith had 21. His three-pointers have been falling more and more. He had the finishing layup. I'm happy for him after he got tapped from Dejante after that three-pointer Dejante made <laughs> or something. Kevin Porter 12 and 10, he didn't shoot efficiently. Jalen Green has been putting quietly together some really good games in a row. He has to cut down the turnovers, but 35 and 5, really solid outing from him. And they didn't even have that much bench help except for one player, Garrison Matthews, had his first good game this season. 20 points, 3 of 5 from the three-point line, 9 free throws made. Four rebounds, two assists, two steals. He was sensational off the bench. And the Houston Rockets get a good win. Competing. Still in the Vampire Yama Tank leading race. Next up, we had the Grizzlies destroying the Pelicans as they move to 11-8. and 8. And unfortunately, the cycle for the Pelicans continues. As you know, Zion is out, Ingram is playing. Zion gets back, Ingram gets out. And the cycle continues as Brandon Ingram had to leave the game early. And I didn't watch much of this game since I got it spoiled as I was watching other games. And yeah, I just watched some highlights. Uh, from what I've read, Brandon Ingram had to leave the game with a toe sprain. Hopefully it doesn't keep him out for too long. Zion was okay, but nothing special. And pretty much everyone played really bad, they, they couldn't stop anyone, Trey Murphy had 21 points at least, but nothing good for the Pelicans from this game, the Grizzlies get a huge win, good win, Jaren Jackson had to play just 22 minutes, 20 points, 4 rebounds, 3 blocks, he's been sensational since returning, and he's getting even more and more into shape, Steven Adams had one of two free throws, shout out to him, 15 and 11, Dylan Brooks was efficient, which is Always something to celebrate. <laughs> ja was really good, 23 and 11 in 27 minutes. 
uh, 27, 6, 28 minutes, I guess. And that was really good. Brandon Clark, 12 and 10 in his 21 minutes off the bench. So just everyone had their way today. They got a really good win, a feel good win. And they can hopefully build on for this for them. Then we have the Bucks making a statement. Giannis finally, you know, looking like himself again. Even though the last game he looked like himself again, but this felt like a statement a little bit as the Bucks destroyed the Cavs in the second half. This was a weird one. Well, not a weird one, but I, this was a weird one as the Cavs were up in the first quarter, second quarter, and they were up 10. It was looking like they were going to comfortably, you know, get through this game. And then the onslaught began as they scored 10 points in the third quarter. They couldn't get anything to go. The Bucks stepped up defensively. Their defense just swallowed them. And they essentially scored 29 points in the second half if you don't count garbage time. Which is crazy. Crazy, crazy stuff from Milwaukee on defense. And also horrible offense from the Cavs. As, well, no one... Besides Donovan Mitchell and the bench could get anything to go. Evan Mobley was 2 of 12. Darius Garland was 7 of 18. Cherry Osman was 3 of 8, which is okay. Dean Wade was 2 of 7, but they were just rough. Rough. And a rough loss as they, you know, could have made a statement themselves. They are now lost two games to Milwaukee. Jared Allen had to play just 12 minutes as he had a weird fall down, which obviously hurt them also. Which obviously hurt them also, but then also, you know, you shouldn't score 29 points without Jared Allen, right? And shout out to the Bucks because Giannis had 10 of 14 free throws. Great stuff from him, 38, 9 and 6, 2 blocks, 13 of 20 from the field. He was dominant in the second half. Javon Carter, 18 points. He was really good. Brook Lopez at his 8 points, 41, 6 plucks as he continues his defensive player of the year case. Bobby Portis, 14, 8 and 4. He was sensational off the bench. Juru contributed with his defense, but he didn't even have to play that much. And everyone just chimed in in the second uh, half as they get a huge win against the Cavs. Next up we have the Thunder defeating the Bulls in overtime as the Bulls continue to be the most confusing team this season to me. After two huge wins against the Celtics and against the Bucks they lose in OKC who just well they Zach Levine has been really bad. Today he had 27 points but he's been inefficient and horrible defensively. He has to play better Keep saying it, I'll keep saying it until he plays a good game, a really good game. Uh, Nikola Vucevic 13 and 13, he was fine. Alex Caruso was really good, but everyone else pretty much sucked off the bench besides Alex Caruso. As the bench was their silver lining to start the season, now their bench is horrible all of a sudden. It, it mad inconsistencies in Chicago, DeMar had 30 on 27 shots, not that efficient, not that great. Patrick Williams, 31 minutes, 11, 6, and 1. I think, you know, you can see something from him at least. And it was just a rough night for the Bulls as they couldn't just get it done over, over these Thunder who are relentless. As Shea is not as efficient as he's been throughout the season these last couple of games, but he continues to put up numbers. He had 30 points, 8 rebounds, 7 assists. 14 of his 15 free throws were made. Some great play from him. The bench once again. They always keep getting points from the bench. Kenridge Williams at 8. 4 of 7. He was great defensively. Jeremiah Robinson Errol had 10 off the bench. Isaiah Joe also made two threes. Darius Baisley had 17 in 19 minutes. They keep playing really good basketball. They are 8 and 11. They could have had a little more wins if they were maybe a little more experienced. But this is a great season so far from OKC. I'm loving what I'm seeing. Hope they keep it up. Next up, we had the Lakers getting a LeBron back and a good win against the Spurs. As they've been absolutely woeful over the last uh, like 15 games already now. They've been horrible and the Lakers are at least on the come up a little bit. With LeBron returning... He had 21 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists, 3 steals, 9 turnovers also, but for his return he was pretty solid, but once again Anthony Davis was the star of the show. 25 points, 15 rebounds, 4 assists, 3 blocks, he's been looking so good, hopefully he keeps this up. 
we want to see a healthy AD, we want to see him playing like a dominant guy he can be, because that's good for the league. Lonnie Walker, 18 points, continues to be the Malik Monk of this season. Austin Reeves has been really good these last couple of games. Great stuff for the Lakers. I didn't watch much of this game, I'll be honest with you. Keldon Johnson, after getting benched last night, not last night, was it last night? After getting benched the last game, 15 points, 6 of 23 from the field. field. Ah, man, I was so excited for him. Hopefully he bounces back because he's been really bad also during this stretch for the Spurs. Jeremy Sohan, the only outlier who's been playing some sort of basketball with Devin Vassell, who struggled today. Trey Jones had a good game at least today, 19 points, 5 assists, 7 of 13 shooting. It's been a rough couple of weeks in the San Antonio, but it's for the better, right? Wembanyama. Next up, we have the Suns winning at home against the Pistons. As I'll be honest, I watched just a recap of this. I, as I'll be honest, I watched just a recap of this. I was not interested in this game at all, and maybe I should have watched it because it was it looked like it was pretty fun. But there's so much time I have in the day, and I had to do a lot of things today. So um, I'll just report these box score watching stats as I you know do every day. Killian Hayes, 17, 8, and 9, 7 of 18, not efficient, but at least he's looking like an NBA player. And the Pistons kept it close. I like Burks, 7 of 8 from the free throw line. He's a professional scorer of the bench. Kevin Knox continues to be pretty solid. Not as efficient today, not as, you know, lights out today, but he's earning minutes, which I'm happy to see. They were missing Jaden Ivey, which really sucks, because maybe they would have won this game. But, well, it's better for them if they lose it, right? And the Suns, even though they've not been as impressive, they keep finding ways to win. DeAndre 18, 28 and 12, his best game of the season, campaign 16 and 10, he's been, uh, continues to be really good from this starting spot, as Chris Paul is still, I'm not sure when he's returning, but he's still not back, Devin Booker 21, 7 and 5, he's been playing fine, not nothing special, but he's been playing good, and the Suns get a good win, and then the game, um, then the game, and then the game I'm most excited about today, the Warriors getting back to 500, two game win streak now, hopefully the start of something beautiful, as they beat the Utah Jazz at home, and are now 10 and 10. This was a really good game, and a really fun game as a Warriors fan, a little bit rough in the third quarter as the Jazz came storming back, they took the lead in the third quarter and felt like, oh man, it was gonna be bad, but the Warriors continue to play solid defense, continue to destroy Utah on the offensive end, and the Jazz have been worse on defense over these last couple of games where they're losing, and except for Laurie Marker and nobody was stand out, Kelly Olenek was really good also, and I really love Jared Vanderbilt's game. Maybe you could trade him for Wiseman. I'm not sure. Uh -huh. But let me stay away from that right now. Malik Beasley had his worst game in a while. As he didn't shoot the ball well. Nicky Alexander Walker took 11 shots. Which I'm not sure you love want. Jordan Clarkson had the good uh, third quarter. Then disappeared in the fourth it felt like. And they just didn't have enough defense for the Warriors. Who are getting more into the groove of things with the changes. With Draymond Green starting not starting, <laughs> yes starting, but you know, being in the second lineup, and he's commanding the second lineup, he's been playing really well, and he's getting more time to shine, it feels like, 13 points, 5 assists, 1 steal, 2 blocks for Draymond, 6 of 9 from the field, his 3 ball is looking better, he was 1 of 2 today, Andrew Wiggins continues to play sensationally, shoot the lights out from the 3 point line, 20 points, 9 rebounds, 5 assists, 3 steals, Kevon Looney, maybe best game of his season, 10 and 12 playoff Loon was in form today. Clay, even though he struggled in the first half, he kept with it, he played within the flow, and he got rewarded in the third and the fourth, as he made 6 of 12 threes, 20 points. Steph, the game's too easy, 33, 5 and 4, 6 of 13, 13 of 23 from the floor, sensational play from him. Jordan Poole, 7 of 15, 19.6 assists, he was great. Dante DiVincenzo played some solid basketball, Jonathan Kuminga played his role really well, and it was just an overall feel-good game for the Warriors. Just the third quarter was a little bad, but really good things to build on. They now go on a two-game roadie against the 
the Wolves and the Mavericks. And if they can win both these games, they'll be right up there in atop the Western Conference and back into, you know, no panic mode, right? And last but not least, we have the Nuggets winning in Los Angeles as they beat the Clippers, who once again were missing Kawhi and Paul George as they are now both out indefinitely. And... <clears throat> And this was the Aaron Gordon game, who had two back-to-back -back great games. He had 29.7 rebounds, 3 assists, 2 steals, 2 blocks. Sensational game from him in 28 minutes. Nikola Jokic, 19, 13 and 6. He's putting up his numbers. He's playing great. Jamal Murray, 21 points, 9 assists. Also a good game from him. They found something with Vladko Kankar, who's been really solid off the bench. He had 13 points, 24 minutes off the bench today. And just a good win for the... Nuggets as they beat the Clippers, who, it's the same old story, right? We just gotta see Kawhi and PG healthy, and we've not seen that. And it's sad, it's saddening. Uh, Terrence Mann had 7 of 18, 16 points, he was really good today. Reggie Jackson sold my bet, he had 9 points, which I hoped he would have more, since, you know, there had to be some pick up the slack, but, well, he didn't. John Wall had 23 points. He was fun to watch today, but it didn't matter. Nicholas Button was plus 14 in his 24 minutes, even though he didn't make a point. Just pointing it out. Rough. It's just rough with the Clippers, man. You know, <laughs> until we see Kawhi and PG actually play in the playoffs, right? Or, you know, play, I don't know, maybe <laughs> like five games in a row, you can be maybe somewhat optimistic, but as of right now, it's just... And not looking too bright for the Clippers. That about does it for today's box coaching episode. We had a huge slate. It has a lot of games. And it was a lot of fun. A lot of good matches. A lot of back and forth matches. Some good blowouts also. If there's, you know, if it's, if there's such a thing. Tonight, we have just four games. The Mavs against the Raptors early here. Which I'll be watching. can wait to just, you know, chill out and watch some basketball late at night. Thunder against the Rockets, uh, eh, like a Spurs again, eh, eh, Jazz Suns should be fun though. So two good games, two meh games to look forward to, but Thunder Rockets will probably be good, but I, I can't bother to watch Lakers Spurs, but I will because I want to make videos about it, right? <laughs> and yeah, I'll be here tomorrow to report, like and subscribe, have a blessed day, stay safe everyone, and I'll see you all tomorrow.